Unless we all get our hands on self air conditioning clothes, let us all learn how to remove sweat spots in Photoshop magically just like this. It just takes four basic steps which most of us already know about but we have to learn how to put them all together. Also stay tuned for step number three because we can learn some cool tricks and techniques to match the color and the lighting that also is going to be helpful if you're into compositing. This is Unmesh from Pixinperfect so without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download the sample photos, do you really want to download this? Anyway, so check the links in the description. All right. So step number one is selecting the color. And that can be done by using a hue saturation adjustment layer. You have to keep in mind that the color in the sweat spot is the same as the color of the shirt or the dress or whatever there is. So we cannot just select this color right here in the sweat spot. We have to select all of it. We can mask it later. Doesn't matter. It's not going to be difficult. Trust me. So let's go ahead and create a hue saturation adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose hue saturation. Now here with the help of the hand tool that you can see right here, just click on the sweat spot. Okay. It makes a selection of that range and then you can expand it if you want to so that you can select better. Let's move it right here. Move the hue and the saturation all the way to the right to see which areas are being affected. This looks okay. Now we have to refine and expand the range just to make sure all of it is affected. There are some areas which are affected differently. So we need to just expand it to make sure all of it is affected. Okay, good. From the left hand side here. Okay, this looks pretty good. Now let's bring everything back to zero. So you can also type in zero zero. Good. Now let's collapse it. We have selected the color. Now we have to mask in the area. So to be able to better mask in the area, what I would suggest is this. Don't bring it to zero. Take the hue and the saturation to the right so that you can see which areas are being affected. Then you select the mask, press control or command I. This inverts the mask, turns it black. Now what is the concept of mask? Black hides and white shows up. So you would select the brush with the white as the foreground color. We would paint on the sweat spot. Okay. You don't have to be super accurate here. Even if you just paint a little extra, that's okay. And I would suggest you paint a little extra. Okay. Now that's a different kind of sweat. You don't want that to happen. Maybe go see a doctor if you have that kind of sweat. All right. So once you're done with painting, Okay, I'm, I'm doing it quickly for you. Then you would open up the hue saturations properties again and properties of any adjustment layers can be opened by just double clicking on the symbol or the icon of that adjustment layer. Now let's bring it to zero or we're going to change it anyway. So it doesn't matter. Now let's match it to that of the shirt. So first step was selecting the color. Second step was masking it in. Now here comes the most important and the most critical step. Step number three, adjusting the color and the brightness. Now, as mentioned before, there are two techniques involved that can help us. So for adjusting the brightness, create a solid color adjustment layer. You can also say adjusting the luminosity. Select any neutral color. If you're in the hue, select any neutral color on the left. Select white, doesn't really matter. Hit OK. Change the blend mode to color. This is one of the most accurate ways to check the luminosity or the brightness and taking away all the colors. Now you could have thought, Hey, why not add a hue saturation adjustment layer and take away all the saturation? No, the view is different. And let me explain you why. And we have talked about it in our check layers video. So if you want to know more about it, check it out right here. So here's the thing. If I create a gradient and this is for explanation, if I create a gradient, let's go ahead and create a gradient from say orange to blue, or let's choose on the right hand side, let's choose yellow, right? Bright yellow, just like that. Okay. And on the left hand side, let's choose red. All right. Okay. Now, as you can see from here, if I double click here, the brightness is hundred percent, even in the red and on the yellow as well, brightness is hundred percent. So technically both are at the same brightness level, but to the human eye, it's not the case. If I just hit okay, if I just hit okay again, turn it off, have a look. Both are technically in the same brightness, but when a human eye looks at it, 
it's actually not. So if you simply add a hue saturation adjustment layer here and take away the saturation, it's gonna be flat out gray. That's not what it's meant to look like according to human perception. So instead of creating a hue saturation adjustment layer with zero saturation, we created a neutral color solid fill layer. Any neutral color that does not have any color in it. So any color just like gray or you can also choose 50% gray, doesn't really matter. Turn that on and change the blend mode to color. Now you see the red is darker that's what human perception sees it like. So that's more accurate way to check it. Okay, now we work on this area. Let's open up the properties of hue saturation. Now all we need to do, we need to increase the lightness. Don't go beyond 95. But it's making it white and black. We were not looking for that. What were we looking for? Let's bring it to zero back again. We had selected that range and that range was in the cyan's. Okay, see we had made that selection. Now simply increase the lightness for it to match don't go beyond 95 because if you do you won't be able to play with the saturation okay so this seems all right do you want even more brightness i think a little bit more so let's go ahead and create a curves adjustment layer and hold the alt or option click on the line between these two or simply click on this button it creates a clipping mask now it only affects that area now you can play with it, you can make it lighter, darker, whatever you want. Don't look at the edge. We will cover that later. Don't worry about it now. So this looks okay. This looks matching. And now it's time for us to simply just turn it off. So the brightness has matched, but the color has not yet. Select the mask again. There are a couple areas left here. So with the help of the brush, white as the foreground color will paint here. There are a couple of areas left. Okay, now let's match the color. To match the color, we can create one more check layer. And that can also be a solid color adjustment layer. 808080 is the hex code for 50% gray. Just make sure you select 50% gray, hit OK, and change the blend mode to luminosity. So change it to luminosity, just like that. Now we will see only the color. As you can see here, the blue shows up, no highlights, darkness, no luminosity, only the colors. This was gray, so it shows up gray, right? So let's go ahead and increase the saturation and see what happens. Let's go back to the hue saturation adjustments, go back to cyan's, and then simply try to increase the saturation here. See, it's begin, it begins to match. It's too much. Let's match it just like that. All right, you wanna play with the hue? Make it a little bit bluer, a little to the right, and it's pretty much matching. Now you can turn that off and have a look. It's it's like, it's gone, right? So there are a couple of edges that we need to work on. So let's go ahead and select the mask again. And with the help of the brush, make sure the foreground color is black now and just try to remove these edges. It's okay if you cannot completely because we will take care of that in step number four. But the more we can remove, the better. I think we might need a little more saturation here. So let's open up the properties, go back to science and simply let's try to increase the saturation a little bit more. Let's go 91. Okay, it looks pretty good. So we are pretty much done. Have a look at the before and after. So here's the before, here is the after. Looks so much more better and I guess we can go a little bit more as well. Let's go back to the science and let's try 94-ish. That would be too much. 93-ish? Nope, 92? Yes. I'm in love with 92. Once we are done with this, we just have to take care of the edges. So step number four is covering up the edge. That's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and delete all these two check layers or you can create a group out of them. Let's turn them on, create a group and turn this, turn this off. And you can name this check layers and you can come back to this any moment or any point of time, but we don't need them anymore. All right, so let's create a new layer on top of everything. Check layers always are at the top. Let's go ahead and delete it. Let's not confuse you. You would take the healing brush tool, the second one, the regular healing brush tool. Then you would make the brush softer, a little bit smaller, larger than the edge. And you have to sample and paint over it on a new layer. Just make sure the sample is current and below. Okay, so hold the Alt or Option. Take a sample. Make sure that aligns here with the preview. 
it won't align that much you'll have to give it that kind of freedom uh, and uh, just paint on it so we'll try to match it to the best of its capabilities now this is a shirt with textures so it's going to be a little difficult for us to maintain the texture but when you zoom out nobody's going to notice but still quality matters take a sample and paint take a sample and paint take a sample here and paint you can also rotate the source so if there is a need you can also do that let me show an example to you so if you take a sample from here it's a little bent there if you want to rotate it you would hold option or alt shift and the right arrow bracket keys to rotate it clockwise left arrow bracket key to rotate it anti-clockwise so if you hold that seat rotates now it's rotated you can just paint along right so if you take a sample from here you need to rotate it a little bit it's already rotated so use that shortcut you can take your time to work on this I'm just doing it very quickly match the pattern and do it see we might have to rotate again option or alt shift and the left arrow bracket keys to rotate it anti-clockwise so we have rotated it good and then we align it up and just continue painting we'll have to take a sample again and continue painting I know it's a little messy but take your time to do it I'll show you the after so if this was a shirt without any texture it wouldn't have taken any time but I wanted to show you a difficult image with all textures and stuff okay let's zoom out and have a look it's almost removed this looks totally awesome so let's zoom out there are a couple of areas here and there which needs to be addressed so let's take a sample from here and we need to rotate the sample again okay okay great let's zoom out and have a look which areas are remaining there's an area here all right let's zoom out okay most of it is removed now if you want to make some adjustments you can just take a break and get back to this because you'll see something which you have never seen before while you were editing because you got so busy or engrossed into doing this that you overlooked it happens with me all the time okay so let's try brightening it even more let's come back to science and let's see if we can brighten it to 97 or 96 and if we do that we have to increase this as well 93 how about that 93 is good just collapse it and we need to work on in here I guess now I also will show you one more optional step if that is required so stay tuned for it at the end so come back to this layer don't forget to do that so the colors are just not matching here you're having a lot of difficulties and there's a pattern always break a pattern all right good now to match the color at the end here's what you can do you can create a brand new layer take a brush okay and then make sure in the eyedropper tool the sample size is not point sample it's at least 5 by 5 or 11 by 11 it takes the average color of 11 by 11 pixels or the number you choose take the brush hold the alt or option take a sample of this color and start painting here it sounds crazy but just change the blend mode to color that way the colors will gradually match just a couple areas just to get it to match here as well as you can see there's an area where it's a little bit desaturated so you can take samples from here and there and just start painting here and there even on the outside take a sample paint see that got saturated well looks really good take a sample from here cover it up right so things like this really help have a look at this most of it is very nicely removed so let's get back to this with the help of the healing brush tool the regular healing brush tool I see a spot there okay that's removed as well let's have a look at the before and after what's he pointing at so here's the before damn and here's the after now I can definitely hear some of you saying hey Mish, that is all cool but what about shirts or t-shirts that are white or gray they have no color in them how can we just remove it that doesn't make sense here's the thing all you have to do 
is to skip the hue saturation. Skip matching the color and you're good to go. In that case, all we need to use is the curves to match the luminosity or the brightness. And you need to create a check layer with a neutral color, gray, white, black, whatever there is, and change the blend mode to color. So you can check it, check the luminosity, and then just by using the curves, just mask it in, brighten it up, and cover the edges just as we did here. You also have to skip the color blend mode and we just painted all those areas. We don't have to do any of that. Just skip the color, everything else remains the same. So that's pretty much it. Just as a quick recap, first step was selecting the color. Select that color just by using the hue saturation adjustment layer. Next, mask the area in. Okay, so we need to select that area. We don't have to be accurate. And then we adjust the color and the brightness. To adjust both the color and the brightness, we created check layers to see better. And then we adjusted the hue saturation lightness and the saturation and the hue to adjust it. Then we added an additional curves adjustment layer, clipped it to the hue saturation adjustment layer to adjust the brightness even more. And then coming to step number four, all we needed to do was to cover up the edge. And there's an optional step that if the colors don't look right, you can create a blank layer and just sample and paint on some areas, change the blend mode to color. So if you see an area desaturated, sample from a nearby area and then just paint over it on new layer with the blend mode color. So that's all for this video. Hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other feature tip, trick or tutorial. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.